Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at activity 2.2, Programming with Procedures, or otherwise known as the charade game. Our main objective for this activity is to reduce the amount of code through the use of procedures. We will not be completing the entire application during this activity, but later on during activity 2.3, we will further our app by adding different components. Today we're going to take a look at what the design requirements are, what the starter code looks like, and what procedures we will be using throughout this application. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the design requirements. Now an actor should start the game by simply touching the word or phrase button. When he or she does so, that word or phrase should appear in the middle of the screen. When the actor is ready to act out that displayed word, they must then touch the start timer button to begin that 30 second countdown. The actor will then silently act out the displayed word or phrase. The actor's teammates must try to correctly guess the word or phrase before the time is up and the timer buzzes. If the teammates do correctly guess the word or phrase before the time is up, the actor can shake the device one time to indicate a correct guess. In order to go to a new word or phrase, the game displays a new word or phrase whenever a correct guess is indicated. This basically means when the device is shaken. The game will display a new word or phrase whenever the time is up. The game also displays a new word or phrase if the actor touches the skip button. Whenever the game advances to a new word, the timer is then reset to 30 seconds. In order to score points, one point will be added to the score for every correct guess or when the device is shaken to indicate a correct guess or answer was given. One point will be deducted from the score every time the timer runs out of time without the player correctly guessing that word or phrase. One point is also deducted from the score for every skipped word or phrase. Now in order to reset the game, the score, the timer, and the word displayed can all be reset when the game is over. So these are the design requirements that we must follow as we move forward through this activity. So the next thing we want to look at is the starter code. So taking a closer look at the starter code, you can see that we have five different event handlers that have been given to us, as well as two global variables. The global variables that have been identified are your score and the time left. We have also been given a start timer button, which will identify the global time left and being able to enable the start clock feature. The reset button event handler is set to reset the global score, our score label, the item label, the global time left, our time label, and also our clock is setting it to false. We have a skip button where we can basically go ahead and deduct a point and that will be adjusted in our score label as well. You have a reset timer button that will reset the time back to 30 seconds. And then we have our clock, which will basically subtract one second every 1,000 milliseconds. Now, as we look through that starter code, we can see that there's some redundant code that we can address during this activity. So what we're going to focus on is how do we actually reduce that amount of code or the amount of redundant code that has been given to us. So we are going to be focusing on using what we call a procedure. And what procedures basically do is collect a sequence of blocks together in a group. So we can put all these blocks into this procedure event handler. We can then use that sequence of blocks to be called by just calling that procedure. So the types of procedures that we're going to be doing during this activity is we're going to create a procedure for the reset timer, which will reset the time. We will create a procedure that will help increment the score. So we will be able to add one not only to our global variable, but also to our score label. And we'll create one last procedure during this activity that will help us to decrement the score or subtract a point. 
So the last thing that we're going to go ahead and take a look at is getting our file or our AIE file imported into MIT App Inventor. You'll be able to locate your AIE file by going to your activity 2.2 programming with procedures finding your 822 charades.aia file in your resource section. Once that file is downloaded, we can simply go to MIT App Inventor, and from there we're going to go to My Projects and Import Project from Computer. Once you locate that file, go ahead and click on it and select OK, and import that file into MIT App Inventor. From here, You'll be able to go ahead and take a look at the starter code that was given to us, as well as what our user interface looks like. In our next tutorial, we're going to take a closer look at modifying the user interface, as well as creating those procedures to reduce the amount of redundant code.